from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover, the virtual experience. Going to be digging into some primary storage. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Omar Assad. He's the Vice President and General Manager for both primary storage and data services with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Omar, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks Stu, happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. All right, so, so what, why don't you start out, frame out for us, uh, kind of uh, where primary storage fits in in the portfolio. Uh, in, in your charter there. Uh, thanks, yeah, so uh, primary storage is a combination of HPE Primera, HPE Nimble, and all the associated software and data management services that go along with it. Uh, we are part of the broader HPE storage umbrella. In addition to that, we have the HPE uh, HCI business and the HPE Complete Partnerships that where we partner with our uh, go-to-market partners and bring total solutions uh, for our customers. From my perspective, I'm the general manager for Primera, Nimble, and all the data management services that come along with it. So that's what we call the primary storage portfolio, mainly centered around uh, block services uh, for our uh, for our customers. Excellent. Well, uh, Omer, you know you've been in the storage industry uh, for quite a while. Uh, we always know that the only constant in our industry is that things are always changing. However, here in 2020, uh, it, it's a little bit more unusual than normal. Uh, Give us a little bit of insight as to you know, how your customers are responding, how HPE is helping them uh, during the current uh, global pandemic. Right, so obviously you know, across the industry, across the world, it's a very difficult time. You know, definitely uh, we're, we're, our customers are facing some challenges. Uh, from our perspective, you know, one of the biggest things that we noticed was in, in these unprecedented times, you know, safety is the paramount uh, so concern for each one of our customers and for HPE employees and our fellow uh, sort of uh, workers around the globe. Uh, the access to the data center has caused some, some challenges, right, for our customers. So obviously uh, for capacity expansion purposes, for, uh, you know, scaling up work from home needs, uh, you can do all of that, but for all of our customers, you know, as the pandemic hit and the shelter in place global policies came across, the access to a da the data center became a big problem as well, right? Uh, so just, you know, a, lo a, a lot of the vendors are making changes to adapt to these situations. Uh, from an HPE perspective, uh, we added, uh, you know, a couple of policies like 90 day payment deferrals. In addition to that, a bunch of uh, financing capabilities to allow our customers to focus on their cash flow health. Uh, and not to worry about uh, sort of uh, the purchase decisions when it comes to uh, from a, from a storage perspective. Now, in addition to that, um, HPE was also fortunate enough to have two cloud storage services. We have data protection online services. We have uh, block storage online services. These are just uh, sort of cloud portal based services that are available uh, in conjunction with our portfolio to our customers. Uh, so one of the unique ways that we were able to help our customers is for without accessing their data center, they were able to slip a lot of their on-prem storage in form of either snapshots or data migrations into our uh, cloud storage subscriptions, which we expect extended to our customers. And they were able to expand and create just-in-time capacity uh, to scale up their in data center needs without actually accessing the data center. Uh, so from that perspective, it was a very profound experience that we had in order to sort of keep our customers operations running while we were shipping extra capacity and expansion capacity to them as they scaled sort of work from home operations like VDI, uh, database scale up as, as they adapted to these sort of uncertain times. Well, excellent, a absolutely a spotlight has been shown on, you know, can the products and services deliver uh, for, for what we needed, that, that flexibility uh, that, that you mentioned so critically important. Uh, great to see things like the, the financial uh, pieces too to make sure you can help companies uh, in these uncertain times. Uh, here at Discover, so of course let's tee up and not keep things waiting any more, longer. Uh, what, what's new uh, for, for your piece of the portfolio? Uh, what uh, so uh, w there are a couple of uh, uh, new announcements that we're, we're bringing to the market over here, right? And one of the biggest ones that I'm most excited by is obviously uh, autonomous operations and AI ops that we are now extending uh, uh, for our customers for, for, for actually taking action. Uh, so what that means is we were sort of the first to market 
uh, with, with AI ops, which is our InfoSight technology that was built uh, off the top of uh, the nimble storage acquisition that happened within HPE. Then we sort of extended that uh, to, uh, uh, to HPE Primera. We extended that to HPE 3 par uh, And then also we are now extending that to HPE SimpliVity. So the, the, the enormity and the size of this AI operation on automation uh, that, that it just continues to grow, right? Uh, from 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 a primera perspective, especially, we are now bringing intelligent and intelligence autonomous operations onto primera as well, uh, which basically means all the AI models and all the AI engines that we have trained uh, for analytics, for uh, helping our customers auto tune workloads, for providing proactive support and proactive recommendations to InfoSight. Uh, a, a couple of those models are now ported into our tier zero portfolio that is HPE Primera. So not only can we make recommendations in Primera, but now we have also made uh, the intent if the customer allows us to go ahead and actually implement those decisions. Uh, so Primera can automatically adjust uh, without having the user intervene because in tier zero applications, the time to intervene is very, very low to non-existent, right? So given certain set of parameters and given the certain set of policies, a HPE Primera can now execute the recommendations autonomously and make real-time changes to workloads and workload profiles and QoS policies to keep our customers going rather than uh, just a recommendation. Again, this is the first in its class for AI autonomous applications where intelligence is not only in recommendations, but now also going ahead and executing those decisions from a primary storage perspective. Yeah, Omar, uh, with, with the things that you were just talking about, this bring us inside, you know, what, what's changing inside the customers that you're working with? Uh, you know, traditionally storage, you know, you had a storage administrator, people thinking about, you know, the, the speeds and feeds and all the knobs that they can turn the storage. When you start talking about autonomous and AI uh, functions coming in, I have to expect uh, there, there's different requirements from the customer and there, there's different people engaged with it. Uh, so, you know, bring us inside what you're seeing uh, at the customer side. So uh, absolutely, Stu, I, you, hit it, you hit it spot on, right? So from a customer perspective, it's always, you know, the, the, the do more with less, right? Uh, that is happening on the training side, that is happening on the, the, the customer persona side. So, you know, simplifying the portfolio is, is, is it absolutely one of the biggest requirements for our customers. There is a general push towards uh, the IT generalist, uh, with an application perspective, from a management perspective, from a storage perspective, there is a lot of simplicity that is desired. Uh, so one of the biggest things that we have changed with HPE Primera is that it's the industry's first tier zero platform, which gives 100% availability guarantee. Uh, so it really, really simplifies uh, from a responsibility perspective, from a customer's perspective, where we pick up most of the risk. Uh, by giving the customers 100% availability guarantee. Uh, it's the industry's first tier zero platform that is self-upgradable, self-installing, and now also self-autonomously executing operations on the customer's behalf. So again, from a monitoring perspective, from, a, from an installation perspective, from a day-to-day -day operational cost perspective, it really, really ties into that do more with less team from a customer's perspective, right? And then from a, from a, from an AI ops perspective, you know, cross stack analytics, we were the first one to bring that to the market. Now we've extended that through across the portfolio. Uh, and then from a recommendations perspective, not only there are these proactive recommendations, but then also if the customer allows us, we will go ahead and execute those recommendations in order to keep the 24 by seven mission critical operations continuously running and continuously adapting to changing conditions from a customer perspective. And then on the customer side, again, there is a lot more simplicity that has been enforced into the environment uh, because again, self-install, self-upgrade, uh, self-autonomous self sort of storage operations have been introduced in tier zero environment. And I think that's the biggest breakthrough in bringing that simplicity in the tier zero environment. Excellent. You, you also, you mentioned that one of the things that companies are uh, leveraging now uh, when, when they need to be working remote is the uh, remote backup capability. Bring us uh, the, the latest as to what HP is doing uh, when it comes to cloud backup. So again, Stu, I think you, you, you raised an important point, right? It, it, one of the biggest things that this pandemic has sort of uh, uh, made uh, the IT operational staff realize that although there can be an outage, but there can be an outage of the kind 
uh, where the systems might be running, but you won't have access to the data center, right? This shelter in place has been a huge learning lesson uh, for, for operational teams, right? Uh, so one of the things that we have now introduced, you know, HPE was uh, with nimble storage earlier was one of the first technologies to have a cloud storage block services available to our customers. Now we've expanded that portfolio and now we have cloud volumes backup also available to our customers. So when you buy HPE Primera as your tier zero offering, or if you buy HPE uh, Nimble Storage as your uh, mid-range uh, tier one offering, with both we now include uh, HPE cloud volumes backup services. So not only uh, do you have access to on-prem storage, but you have access to backup capabilities which are now managed by HPE for, for our customers as well. And then in addition to that, uh, the mobility technology that uh, with source size D2 that transfers these backups into an HPE managed backup service is also included with the piece of software. And then in addition to that, we have also made HPE cloud backup available to our ISV partners. So whether you are Veeam, uh, whether you're Commvault, uh, we have source side plugins available so our customers who are on our partner ecosystem can also take advantage of that. Uh, one of the biggest changes that, you know, as you know, I'm reiterating this point, uh, it is included with our portfolio. It is included from a software perspective. No particular physical changes need to be made at the data center and customers can take advantage of that um, you know, as soon as they start consuming the the, the Primera or Nimble boxes, along along with the with the rest of the portfolio. Yeah, you know, back up to the cloud was one of the earliest cloud storage uh, solutions that we saw up there. Um, it, it's good to hear you say uh, that you've you've got kind of integrations with the partners uh, and with your portfolio. Anything else that you'd point out that really differentiates what HP is doing compared to you know other cloud providers or other you know software solutions out there? So two, two things, right? So from, uh, from a data protection perspective, this entire software portfolio is sort of bundled in, right? Uh, when, when, you, when you look at HPE Primera or when you look at HPE Nimble, like one of the biggest differentiating factors is that the, the, the entire encapsulation of a solution from a workload perspective is thought through, right? Uh, your application autonomous support, uh, so whether you're running SQL, Oracle, BDI, next-gen applications, the awareness of these workloads is present um, inside of InfoSight and it is also present inside of the boxes. And then in regards to that, their lifecycle management, uh, their uh, you know, backup capabilities, their recovery capabilities, their DR capabilities, that entire uh, ecosystem and it, what, what it takes to take a particular workload run, is also built into HPE Primera and HPE Nimble uh, environments and, and, and proactive support of visibility and lifecycle operational support of these workloads, that awareness from an intelligence perspective is built in with InfoSight, right? So one of the largest or, or, the, or the most critical difference is that it's not a piecemeal solution. The entire ecosystem portfolio from a protection, lifecycle management, DR, test and depth is completely thought through and incorporated when you buy any particular aspect of the HPE block storage portfolio. Excellent, well, when we talk about primary storage, one of the big impacts on that market has been that the wave of hyper-converged infrastructure. Um, you know, I've had conversations, uh, everything from your GreenLake offering uh, is how to have a managed service uh, with, with many options uh, with, with HCEI. Uh, underneath that, of course, HPE purchased SimpliVity. Help us understand, you know, where where you think uh, HCI fits today, and how that relates to uh, overall your section of the market. Right, absolutely, Stu. Right, so HCI has had a profound impact in in uh, simplifying the consumption of the data center. Right, uh, HCI, according to me, is an experience. Right, it's an infrastructure consumption experience. Uh, storage, networking. Uh, compute are abstracted out and, and you start to consume that as virtual machine instances to simplify your operations, right? So from an HCI perspective, uh, HPE SimpliVity is, is one of our, our largest offerings in the portfolio uh, for, uh, you know, for smaller data centers, uh, for, for IT generalists, for the edge uh, cases, HPE SimpliVity, uh, SimpliVity is one of the preferred choices that the customers go to, right? Now, in addition to that, we have also in introduced DHCI, uh, which is called disaggregated aggregated HCI. The, the disaggregated HCI is sort of a pun on the on, on the name. It is it is sort of a conversation starter. That's that's why we love it. 
But again, in, in keeping true to the nature of, you know, HCI is a consumption experience. So once you once you put the infrastructure in the closet and you shut the closet door, you should not be able to sort of tell whether it's a single box that's running the entire portfolio or it's disaggregated storage networking and compute instances that are running the portfolio. From our perspective, uh, you know, the flexibility that the customer has from a consumption model, so storage networking and compute in a single model, uh, in a single chassis, if that is simpler for, for the customers, but then if the compute and the networking and the storage needs need to scale independently, but yet maintain the same simplicity of that consumption infrastructure, we offer that use case as well, right? And that's where DHCI based on HP Nimble Storage with HP ProLine servers and Aruba M series switches all consumed as a single software layer comes into play. So all the flexibility of uh, Converge but the simplicity of hyperconverge is consolidated into that. And then from a from a from a financial perspective, the customers can buy on CapEx and OpEx, basically GreenLake or non-GreenLake. It's up to the customer. But again, where the focus is, focus is not on the hardware too. The focus is on what the software consumption layers are. And then from a flexibility perspective, yet being able to scale storage and networking independently, should the customer want that flexibility. Yeah, you know, it, with, without getting into too much of uh, kind of the, uh, the, the the naming conventions, we actually at Wikibon, our research arm, we had put out what we called server sand, and it was looking yeah. at the architectures that the hyperscale uh, environments were doing, um, which was even different. Really, you you bake, uh, you know, the the scalability that you need into the application, um, and therefore some of the underlying software which you can scale, you you can do differently. So Absolutely. HCI, DHCI. Uh, you know, any other uh, prefix in there. Uh, we like to have an umbrella uh, rather than, you know, just a bucket uh, that you put things in with, with a rigid uh, environment. Okay, so uh, I guess, uh, you know, final takeaways, uh, you know, uh, any other key things that you want to point out from HP Discover, uh, you know, any sessions, papers, the like that people should make sure uh, that they take away uh, for, from this week's event. Uh, they, so, so obviously at autonomous operations uh, with InfoSight models being actually executed on on-prem storage uh, is is one of the biggest takeaways. In addition to that, uh, we brought uh, you know mission critical DR to all three or all, all both uh, Primera and Nimble storage platforms as well, as well. So three pocket DR where cloud storage is also integrated as part of that DR story. Uh, so you can have synchronous replication between two sites and then a bunker site, whether that can be a third autonomous data center or it can be HPE uh, cloud storage offering as part of that, that tier. In addition to that, we introduced all NVMe Primera uh, and uh, we introduced um, uh, storage class memory on the nimble storage architectures as well. So obviously further pushing the uh, envelopes of HPE Primera being a four node massively parallel all NVMe system and then uh, nimble storage, which is our sort of cache accelerated architecture, now adds another tier of storage class memory. So we give you the performance of storage class memory at, at, at the price of all flash arrays are, are some of the some of the biggest uh, capabilities that we're putting forward. And then lastly, uh, you know, uh, in regards to storage automation, uh, you know, we've all support on HPE Primera, uh, you know, we've all was all legacy already supported on HPE Nimble. So combining uh, Primera, Nimble, uh, three bar over there gives it one of the largest adoption and uh, promoters of VWALs out there with the largest VWAL install base. And the last but not the least, we are now introducing, um, you know, Google AMPOS and Google CSI based container uh, storage automation drivers for both HPE Nimble as well as for, uh, you know, uh, uh, HPE Primera. So Kubernetes CSI compliant uh, container uh, sort of implementation drivers are now implemented in both the platforms that are available for general use for our customers that prefer to run bare metal or container-based workloads uh, for, for their production environments. All right, well, Omer, uh, no shortage of updates uh, that you gave our audience to be able to dig in and find out the latest on your portfolio. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, pleasure to be here. Thanks so much, Stu. All right, stay with us for lots more coverage. HPE Discover Virtual Experience. I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you for watching theCUBE. Thank you.